Hello, my name is Jen Zurman. I am a professional seamstress, and I wanted to share with you my most recent completion. It's a modified messenger bag um, to fit an alto sax um, instrument um, case for my niece um, so she could ride her bike to school um, with her instrument as uh, on her back. Um, I found the pattern for the uh, messenger bag that I used on Craftsy. Um, look right here. It's Taylor's unisex bag. You can search for it there um, if you want to um, use it in its purpose or as it was intended or use it as a guide like I did. Um, this bag, I learned a lot about how um, bag construction works. Um, one of the things I want to show you first is that this involved a lot of interfacing preparation. This is the cover uh, layer, the top layer. This is a fusible fleece and to the fusible fleece a fusible um, woven interfacing is was um, attached and um, the fusible would be pressed or still needs to be on this um, test sample needed to be fused to the the outside of fabric but on for the lining it had a lot of interfacing where the lining fabric itself was also fused to either a fusible fleece and then the woven um, fusible or um, just the woven fusible and the lining as you saw here and that was a lot of prep time on getting the pieces ready to do the um, actual construction of the bag. Um, another thing that I learned doing this is in measuring the bag to make it the correct size for the um, instrument itself I did a good job measuring you know the width and the length that I needed but not so much the depth because um, when I modified the front and the back pieces, um, it, I knew that it was going to fit. But what I forgot to take into account was that it was going to slightly wrap around the instrument, um, what ended up being two inches on each side. And so initially, I actually um, modified the gusset piece, which you can see here, and made it too big. And so I finished the entire bag with those dimensions, even after checking um, with the instrument um, when I was at the stage just before I added the front piece here. And, um, you know, it was a beautiful bag. I was like, oh, it's all done, wonderful. The flaps all out, the closure, everything. And the instrument was flopping too much. And originally... Um, you know, it called for an adjustable strap, and I had uh, an ace, uh, one strap that was asymmetrical across the back. And here's the fashion slide that I used to, to adjust it, and it was beautiful. But again, with the with instrument already being too floppy, it also made the strap too unstable for riding on a bike. So that didn't work. So when I came back to the studio. <coughs> I ended up cutting down the gusset piece, which is this piece right here. And this is actually ended up going back to the original size of the pattern um, all the way around. So that was an interesting learning experience. But in, you know, changing the, the adjustable strap on it, I ended up taking, um, making straps back strap or backpack type straps um, by repurposing the gusset um, piece that I had uh, narrowed that I cut off um, into the two backpack straps and to make sure that I got the correct length I actually modified 
them from my son's skull candy uh, backpack where I just took off the hardware and measured what I needed. So on this, I wanted to make sure then that the straps were adjustable and I was going to think more, well, this is going to be like a tall backpack like when you go camping. So I made adjustable straps and got the hardware necessary. There's a slide here, D-ring to hold it in place. And to give it a little bit more stability, I actually, um, just a second here. I actually made a, um, a belt to go um, under at the very base of the, the straps themselves that she can adjust and buckle to um, give it more stability when she's actually on her bike. Now, when I got, I had to do an actual fitting with her for the, the um, waist belt portion and the um, straps to make sure that I had <coughs> given her enough slack and adjustment on the straps so that she could adjust them to where she needed them, which was a good thing. I actually had her get on her bicycle with the bag on and the case in the bag and ride around with her bag on her back and her bike helmet um, in the driveway and her dad just happened to be at the house at the time and he was commenting that he felt that maybe I should have moved you know, maybe I needed to move the straps because of um, you know his concern was that she would you know uh, hit her head with the uh, um, instrument here. Well, it's a good thing that I put the straps where I did because um, we both didn't take into account, but maybe I did in the back of my mind, that she would also be riding a bike helmet. And so um, with, you know, where I placed the straps on the bag with her bike helmet, with her instrument, riding around in the, the driveway, um, we could clearly see that the bag was going to work. It wasn't going to shift. She was going to be comfortable riding it um, for distances. Although school isn't that far away for her, but um, wherever she needed to go um, with the bag and the instrument in it. So um, this is, you know, a labor of love. It was supposed to be a Christmas present um, in 2016. Um, but due to some other projects I had and some thought variables on um, how I was going to go about making the bag for her, um, and, you know, with mo the modifications, it took a little bit longer. But I think the end result was worth it. Um, I will say this. This is my first time also using a magnetic closure system on a bag and um, my only tip for that in the future would be is if you're <coughs> the, the directions on your pattern tell you exactly where to put it that you actually do a test um, to make sure that that's where you want feel it needs to be um, to close and remain closed um, when you have it um, assembled and completed and so um, thank you for listening. I appreciate your comments. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen the rest of my entries on my blog, it's jaz at grandisle.com. And I look forward to our next time um, I post. Thank you.